here. Some of them who often will talk about the will to win, will talk about everything they are with their physical abilities and why they think they can dominate at the next level. But here with Sharp Dre, the conversation drifted to the cerebral side of things, his mental fortitude and how much he depends on a mental coach to visualize success. Absolutely, Joe, and th that's something that, you know, obviously I was happy to hear, and it's something you don't hear enough from young fighters. Oftentimes fighters want to talk about their records. They want to talk about, you know, their training and how good they are physically. But the main ingredient when they step up in competition is the mind. He, he's, he's doing his reps and taking his reps psychologically. So when that big moment comes, he's not just ready physically, but he's also ready from the neck up. You see Sharp wanting to maintain distance. You see him switch from some orthodox to southpaw. You know, he's the taller fighter, he's the more rangier fighter. And you see a Flory trying to make his way inside to get to the body of Sharp. Two inches taller at five foot nine, and Sharp also has the 73 inch reach. I don't think either either one of these fighters not having a crowd here tonight is going to affect them because they're former sparring partners. Uh, Ofori used to be a sparring partner for Archie Sharp, and this is typically what the boxing gym sounds like. You hear your coaches, one or two other people, but really it's just you and your opponent in that ring. Timmy, I want to ask you about what Dre just brought up because they have sparred against each other. That was prior to each of them having their first 10-round bout. They got a lot of work together back in 2018, but Sharp has really gone out of his way to tell everybody and making sure Ofori knows it that he feels he has changed so much over the course of those couple years yeah you can change in a couple of years absolutely you, you, the, your job is to continue to get better get better with your craft it's going to be a lot different you know and he's showing that right now I mean I've I've studied I've studied sharp you know he you no know, typically is a little bit more erratic he's a lot more patient right now I've seen him using his jab um Getting a better understanding of also deep distance. You know, that was a that was a problem for him. That's all a little early on in his career. But looks like he's now made those adjustments. Well, we will dig more into it when we come back for round number two, the evolution of the 18 and 0 Archie Shuck. Joe, Tim, Dre, and Mark with the action for you. Live from London is top ranked boxing on ESPN round number two between Jeff Ofori and the 18 and O Archie Sharp who told us and we saw it early on he said listen I feel confident in my ability to switch hit but really Tim what he wants to concentrate on is using his feet much more of not rushing in of being a little more patient a little more mature understanding range and picking his shots yeah right there you see a sequence right there where he was swinging wildly and I'm talking about sharp you know one of the things when you you a young fighter you got to learn to take your time don't rush things you got 10 rounds to work and sharp you know he told us in the fighter meeting that he wants to be a little bit more patient right there you just saw him get a little bit erratic with his punches you know he needs to just tone it down just a bit and start placing his punches and Tess you're talking about the feet of sharp okay he's switching it from southpaw to orthodox you know he's doing it right in front of a four year four he hasn't made him pay for that yet but he also has his hands down as he's trying to get away you know for four he was to drop levels and come over the top with a right hand he'll be able to catch him on the way out There's Ofori trying to get that right uppercut to land, and then Sharp ties up on the inside. You see, Tess, this is the type of fight that Ofori likes. He likes to be in control. Right now, to me, he's in control. Even though Sharp looking like he's, you know, he's bending and flexing and stuff like that, and, 
you know, he looked like he's in control. He's really not. You know, Afori, Afori's closing the gap on him. He's getting where he needs to get to, but he just needs to dial in on his punches. Yeah, I think that what this is showing me is that Ofori knows that Sharp struggles when he's pressured uh, the way that Ofori's pressuring him right now. And Ofori hasn't landed anything meaningful, but it's the body presence of Ofori that has Sharp up against the ropes and holding on early in this fight. And if your team's Sharp, you don't want to see this just in the second round. And see, what a lot of people don't understand is, and a lot of fighters need to understand this, is that if you let a guy just walk in, get inside your kitchen, and you ain't make him pay pay for some, pay with something, he's going to continue to do that. He's going to get comfortable walking straight in. And you see Sharp, he's not throwing enough punches or countering enough on a forey to keep him off of him. Forey trying to close that distance. Mark Kriegel, his ultimate goal is the guy headlining this card tonight. You know, everyone's high on Sharp, except maybe you're right, Carl Frampton. We noticed during the fighter meetings, he keeps mentioning Frampton, keeps beating the drum. I asked Jamie Conlon, who has a hand in repping each of the guys, he says Carl looks to Archie as a possible swan song for his career. And, and Carl sees the recognition, he, uh, and, and Archie sees the recognition he's been craving in, in, in Carl. Actually, Jamie said there's been a lot of tension between them in the bubble this week in London. Interesting. Maybe we will see them down the road for now. He's got business to do against Ofori as he lands the right hand here early in round number three. Dre, when we asked Sharp specifically about is he ready for Frampton, Dre said, I absolutely believe I'm ready for Frampton right now. He said, I was sparring with the guy when I was 17, 18 years old. He was in his absolute prime. I knew I had the ability then. Now I'm 25. I know I'm ready. Yeah, that, that sounds good, Joe. I mean, you know, a lot of different things happen in sparring, and, 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 you know, fighters spar different ways. I was a fighter that went all out in sparring. Some fighters like to work on things. They have controlled sparring, and they're not really trying to win the session. And, you know, that's just, when you talk to Frampton, that's what he sounds like. He sounds like that type of fighter. So I, I think Sharp needs to just focus on a Afori tonight, a journeyman who is giving him some trouble right now, and a guy who he really hasn't solved. So keep his eyes off of a guy who's established and has, and has done a lot more than him, and just focus on not only winning fights, but looking good doing it. Sorry, guys, I got to break the ice. He's not ready for no call, Frampton, man. What, what I'm watching right now, what I'm witnessing right now, this... Don't even have a sharp jab, can't even establish his presence. You know, he's a struggle against a guy, a veteran fighter in Frampton. Nice to have confidence, isn't it, Timmy? It's good to have confidence. I, I get it, but you got to have the right tools to go along with it. There's no doubt there are levels to this game. Switching stances once again. Yeah, I'm not... I'm, I'm not going to write Archie Sharp off. I mean, he has tools. He has weapons. He's still learning when to use them and how to use them, and that's a process. My thing is, he's not ready for a fighter of that caliber yet. You see that lunge right there? Lunge with the back left hand? Come on. A seasoned vet to see that? Step back, boom. Counter left hook. Counter overhand right. That's just easy work. You know, look at him pull back with his hands down. He's had his hands down from round one, and I'm talking about Sharp. A lot of fundamental flaws. A lot of fundamental flaws from Sharp. Good talent, but a lot of fundamental flaws I see for the next level. Start of a good afternoon of fights from London. Mick Conlon, Carl Frampton still to come. Round four from London between the undefeated Archie Sharp and Jeff Ofori. Sharp right now with a 34 to 17 power punch connect advantage as we begin this fourth round. How do you tame a fighter like Jeff Ofori who really doesn't have anything to lose and who may know you from the, you know, your previous day sparring, who is more wheel than skill. If you're Archie Sharp, it starts with the left hand. You have to pick the jab up. You got to keep that long left hand out there. You have to hit Ofori with the jab. You have to paw with the jab. If he gets inside, let him feel your physical strength. Every now and again, still a body shot here and there to let him know you're there and get your respect 
with your offense. I think Sharp has given up way too much ground. He's conceding way too much ground to Afori and giving him way too much respect. What has Jeff Afori done in his career to, you know, get this kind of respect in a fight like this? Archie has to start slowly taking over this fight, or this is a fight that Afori could win. Completely agree, Dre. And it's not just in terms of having effectiveness with the jab, he's only landing 17%, but simply throwing it, simply utilizing it. Right now, he has only thrown 29 total jabs as it stands. Well, Joe, sometimes a young fighter will get caught up in a, in a veteran, you know, a veteran fighter's game, which is posing and kind of wasting time instead of making up his mind. He talked a lot about the psychological aspect. Well, here's a good time to make up your mind to start to take over a fight. Don't wait for a foray, you set the tone. I want to know what the crazy part about Ofori, Ofori getting inside, he's not even using his jab and he's able to get inside. That's the crazy part about this. You know, Sharp's not doing anything to keep him off, and before he's not even using the jab, and he's able to get inside. Can you imagine someone else at the next level getting inside of Sharp? Easy work. This is with the counter left, and then switches stances again. See, when you make a guy miss like that, when you make a four, he miss like that, you got to make him pay. And when you do it, if you do it in combinations, you'll make him keep his hands home. And you make him have to adjust to your offense. Sharp's not doing that. And that's why a four, he's just walking straight in. So glad to be back with you after life in the Vegas bubble. Now live fights from London. And then some great fights come to win today against Darren Trainer to get that opportunity. Round number five here of our first fight, Archie Sharp trying to stay undefeated and against Jeff O'Forey. You see guys with their left hand down like Sharp, you got to throw right hands. Let the right hand go. It will find its way home. Trust me on that. And if Afori, if he just throws that right hand, he landed one about 10 seconds ago. If he continues to do that, he's going to land. Afori hasn't thrown a lot of punches in this fight. I mean, he, he'll throw here and there. And, you know, even inside, you know, he's not doing a lot. Like, his body language is aggressive, but... He's not throwing any fierce punches that, that you know, should cause Archie Sharp, Sharp to be moving the way that he is, giving up that kind of energy and giving up that kind of ground. Body language is a biggie at the highest level, and that's something Archie Sharp is learning right now in this fight. And it's up to Sharp's corner to point this out to him. He's got to ask him a frank question. Why are you moving? the way that you're moving. Why are you giving up so much ground? We know this guy. We've sparred this guy. We've dominated this guy. He's our former sparring partner. So go out there and act like it. Yeah, Richard Sawyer is his trainer. They are. We discussed that two years ago. They got a lot of time in the ring yeah. against each other. So they showing, they showing each other a lot of respect. In other words, that's what they're doing. They're showing each other respect. Don't wrestle, don't wrestle, don't wrestle. You're wrestling. Howard Foster encouraging them to work out of that position. Before he bearing his shoulder in, but not letting his hands go on the inside. Now a little bit of space, tries to fill it with two right hands that come up short before Sharp wraps up underneath his neck and they separate. Three-punch combination and from Sharp. Is doing, <clears throat> yeah, Joe, Ofori's doing what he told us he was going to do. He said, I'm a pressure fighter. I I'm just about getting in there and trying to will my way to a victory. So he's he's doing his part, and he's keeping his word. Now he targets the body before going upstairs with a right hand. There's a good right hand to the body from Jeff Ofori. And then one in return, plus an uppercut from Sharp. 
Pace picks up just a little bit here in the closing moments of round number five. Halfway through our scheduled 10 rounder to open up the afternoon before. Yeah. CompuBox punch stats right now as we start round number six. Archie Sharp with a 62 to 43 connect advantage. Right uppercut from Ofori. Covering up is Sharp on the inside, looking for some space. Misses there with the right hand. Ofori presses again, goes with the left hand to the body. Test right now, at this point, this fight's up for grab right now. I don't, I mean, I, it might be three rounds apiece. For the guy, no one's really separated themselves thus far. Don't be busting out that new math on me, Tim Bradley. We only scored five rounds, possibly <laughs> three to two. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That, that was new map, huh? <laughs> Looking at six. <laughs> and you want to know something? You want to know something, Tess? The probably the reason why I was saying that is because uh, Ofori came out dominating the, the first half of this round so far. You've already put it down Attack for him, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a right hand from Ofori. If I'm Jeff Ofori, I'm, I'm doing what he's doing. I'm going to continue to press, and I'm going to take advantage of everything that Archie Sharp is not doing. Archie Sharp is not punching. He, he doesn't seem to have a game plan. He's throwing panic punches to try to keep Ofori off of him. If you're Ofori, you got to go in there, and you got to continue to let your hands go. He said he's in great shape. Archie Sharp said, I know Ofori, he stays in great shape, so he shouldn't fade down the stretch, and he should try to get a career best win tonight. He needs to keep doing what he's doing. Yeah, fellas, I just have to wonder if, if this is what Sharp's sports psychologist had him envision and what the shrink is going to tell him when he gets back. I don't think the visualization included <laughs> some constructive criticism from Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley, but that is the reality of the situation as we come to the end of round number six, scheduled for 10, Sharp and Ofori, Mick Conlin is on deck and we will discuss more about Mick Conlon's move down to 122 pounds where he wants to contend for a world title. Of course, the WBO recently vacated by Emmanuel Navarrete and then Angelo Leo picked up that belt earlier this month. Uh, the announcement that we had of our plans for the next couple weeks are very exciting when it comes to championship caliber fights. And later, Alvarez Joe Smith Jr. in a title eliminator next week on ESPN Plus. And then on the 29th, we'll have Jose Ramirez. Finally, Andre, finally the fight with Victor Postal. We've been going back to early February when it was originally scheduled in China, rescheduled. COVID moved it again out of the spring, and here it is coming at the end of the summer. Joe, the third time has got to be the charm for this fight. It has to be. And then the week after that, in early September on ESPN, we'll see Jamel Herring against Jonathan Akendo as Herring looks to defend his WBO belt at 130 pounds. Why that is of great import is because of today's main event. If Carl Frampton gets through Darren Trainer today, comes out clean, and the same happens with Jamel Herring, then we are going to have that showdown for a 130-pound championship in the WBO in November, reportedly. And we saw this week both sides saying, including Bob Arum, the Hall of Fame promoter of top rank, that that is a done deal. Now, the guys have to do their part. Halfway through round seven here with Sharp and a four. I don't doubt that the Jackal will get the job done, but he has a tall, tall task after that against a fighter in Jamel Herring, a guy that stands at 5'10", 
with the, a 72 inch reach that can box and he's also a southpaw now you know and you have the jackal standing at 5'5 five five with a 62 inch reach that's a fight in itself Fellas, I'm telling you right now, this is exactly what the sparring sessions look like between Jeff Ofori and Archie Sharp. This is this is a rerun. You know, it was a red flag for me when, when Archie continued to say that I've gotten better. I've gotten better. Almost trying to convince Ofori and convince himself that he's not the same fighter that Ofori once saw when they sparred. That showed me that Ofori had some, had some moments and probably dominated some of those sessions to make Archie continue to repeat that leading into this I, fight. Dre, I completely agree with you. It's why I brought him. has closed in that range. Right now, it is only a 79 to 72 connect advantage for Sharp. Both men throwing just over 300 total punches, according to CompuBox. Right hand to the body from Euphoria. Sharp drifts out of range. So Sharp has a system, you know, he'll move left, he switch his softball stance, move right, he'll be in the orthodox stance, or vice versa. You know, I think he's one of those guys that, you know, he knows every trick in the book, but just hasn't learned how to, to put it all together. You know, he does have some skills, I can see he has some ability, got some good speed, got some good reflexes, does have some bad habits. But he just still hasn't figured it out, man, how to use all these tools and when to use them inside the ring. I'll let you folks know at home, anytime you get an opponent on the ropes, that's the time you want to unleash with your power shots. You know, they have nowhere to go but to the side. Throw those, let those power shots go when you get them pent on the ropes. Load up with your punches. You know, Jeff Ofori is a solid fighter, but he's not a better fighter than Archie Sharp. And what Ofori has done a great job of tonight is selling an illusion. He's he's caused Archie Sharp to believe that he's the better fighter, which has caused Sharp to be hesitant and not believe in his own ability and his own skill. The missing ingredient for Sharp tonight is a, is a belief that he's the better fighter and to go out there and do it. And you can have a psychologist, you can take mental reps, but after you do that, it's about execution. And he's not executing the mental game plan tonight. Well, Forey definitely has taken him out of his element. Sharp likes to stay on the outside and be the counterpuncher. But a Forey's really stepping up the tempo and letting his hands go and putting a lot of pressure on him, forcing him to make mistakes and forcing him to fight him when he doesn't want to fight. Left hand on the inside. They'll have two rounds to go. Ten rounds scheduled, and then we will get to see Carl Frampton in our main event. And coming up next, it'll be Irish Mick Conlon. Beautiful look at York Hall at the BT Sports Studios in London. Glad to be bringing you the action from London today, right here, mid-afternoon on ESPN. A little Saturday night is our right for fighting in the UK, and a little afternoon delight here stateside to get some bonus boxing. Joe, Tim, Andre, and Mark with you. And then next week, it is back to Vegas on ESPN Plus to see the title eliminator at light heavyweight in what should be an absolute fan-friendly fight between Alayda Alvarez and Joe Smith Jr. Dre, I don't see any other way that that one doesn't please with those two styles and the way those two go after it, Alvarez and Smith Jr. next week.
I agree. The, the, you know, and I, and I do believe that's going to end in a knockout. You know, both fighters are coming off of two good wins. I mean, Alvarez has a bunch of injuries that he's dealing with. That's part of the game. Hopefully he's healthy, and if he's healthy, it's going to make for a tremendous fight, and I can't wait. It was Alvarez who back in January scored the knockout of Michael Seals that Tim is on the very short list of knockout of the year. I thought it was a knockout of the year. <laughs> Man, I was sitting there live ringside. That was a that was one heck of a punch he landed, a right hand. I'll tell you this, Timmy. I'll go I'll go way off the radar for the candidate of knockout of the year that I love to this point. And that is what we saw on the night in Mexico City when Emmanuel Navarrete was the headliner in his comeback fight, the world champion. But a guy named Sergio Sanchez had a spectacular, absolutely spectacular left uppercut, a one-punch knockout of Gustavo Pena that, to me, I'd put in that number one slot, but at the higher level, yes, a later Alvarez was a wow moment back in January. At Sharp getting turned around there, and Howard Foster, the referee, still on the other side of the ring, so Ofori says, let me go after this here as he... Picks up the volume punching a bit. See, this is why it's very important. This is why it's very important for you to work on every aspect of your game. And I say this time and time again. You have to work on every aspect. If you can fight on the outside, well, that's great. You can shoot three-pointers. I understand that. But if you can't take it in the inside, you're one-dimensional. And you can see here, Sharp doesn't like it in the inside. He ties up. He reaches out. He gives his, gives his hands. And you see Ofori taking total advantage of it. <laughs> Jeff Ofori, to this point, according to CompuBox, have each landed precisely 103 punches. Got to be a dead even fight right now. Oh, Fori could be winning this fight. In my opinion, he's been prying the pressure. He's been dicta dictating the pace from the start. Well, I banked the early rounds for Sharp, but undoubtedly the middle rounds and the back end, the work rate of Fori, the pressure fighting of Fori, the lack of the jab, the fundamental flaws that you pointed out, Timmy, undoubtedly Fori's got himself right in range. You see right there, you see when the guy, he's squared up and he's moving his head like that. Forget about the head. Hit him right in the chest. Hit him in the body. Hit him on the arms. Hit him anywhere else but the head. Short left hand from Sharp you know, as it is back against the ropes. You know, you hear the, you know, the old adage that styles make fights, and that's true for every fighter. That's why you want to see a young fighter fight different styles and see him in different situations to see how he responds. Archie Sharp has shined against other guys that allowed him to look a certain way. Jeff Ofori is not allowing him to look good tonight. Reminder, we have much more coming your way with Mick Conlon and Carl Frampton. Plus, the big news that broke this week that the mega fight of Vasily Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez is happening on October 17th. So we will get all the reaction from Mark, Dre, and Timmy on the unification bout at 135 pounds between the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world and the brash, bold, power-punching world champion of Lopez. That's coming up in just moments. Left uppercut from Ofori. Come on, 
We talked about who's up in this fight, and I think Jeff Afori is slightly up in this fight. I just think he's earned it. I think he's grinded his way to a victory tonight. Um, I, I don't know what Archie Sharp did uh, that was consistent enough to tell me that he's winning this fight. He, he's had some moments in this round, but Ofori's right there with him, as you see right now. There's a right uppercut from Ofori. As he's coming after him down the stretch here as they go towards the distance. And Sharp, wide swinging, battling back. You get the sense with Sharp that he thinks he may have done enough early on, but Ofori came on strong. He needs control. He needs to learn how to control distance. He doesn't know how to do that. And that's the biggest problem that I see with Sharp. He does have skills, does have quick reflexes, got a little bit of power as well. But I think it was a terrible performance. He should grow from this performance if he can get a win. Let's see if he did enough to stay unbeaten here. Sharp or a fourie. Here's Craig Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to a referee, Marcus McDonald, score totals. He has it close, 96 to 95. The winner from Welling, Archie Sharpshooter Sharp. Razor thin decision win for Archie Sharp, who moves his mark to 19 and 0. But to your point, Timmy, he only landed 11 jabs. We've got Mick Con